Hello everybody and welcome. It is time for a new episode zero. This is going to be the preparation episode of the new Land of Good and Evil saga. So in this one I'm going to play the Dark Ages mod that I always want to try out this one here, Dark Ages 5, War and Mythos. This one does soup up the difficulty of evil biomes and generally adds in a lot of nastiness, wizards, illithids, you name it. And also I have brought up a mod pack that will make good biomes even more dangerous. So the purpose of this episode is to give you an insight about how the world creation has worked and also is supposed to be a platform where you guys leave me in the comment section the ideas of fortresses you want to see in the land of good and evil. So the world is already pre-existing but I want to show you how it was created. So first off let's get over the mods then we get over the world creation and then we get over the fortress we're going to play in season one. So mod wise I'm going with my usual suspects. Audible alerts because it's just so useful. See through smoothing designations quality of life combat lock with uh, lock, combat sound i i find it at times a little bit unnerving but it is so good to have an audio when somebody dies on the map that's why i love this mod creature graphics extended goes without saying then work detail icons well you can already um think what that's going to be i'm going to point that out in the, in the series as well and here we have the two uh, main parts savage good savage good biomes i mean i'm not running the no giant birds mod and uh, we're going to see how well that works and here the war and mythos main thing plant graphics gold or gold because i really don't like how gold looks like interface tweaks for those visible hotkeys metal plate floor for more fancy metal plate floorings more food names Obvious engravings reduce Z fog and seasonish crops. Seasonish crops makes it possible to grow underground everything around the year, but it reduces the harvest yield a little bit to balance it out. So there we go. This is the mod pack that we're running. When you're using it, keep in mind that you have sword the creature graphics extended upwards. So well, there we go, that's the mods. Let's head on over to the detail mode because I went and created a bit of a more special world. So here we go. First off, um, this is a medium region, size-wise. So check it out, 129 to 129. Here we go. I'm using a seed, so if you want to play along in the same world, it's the opportunity to do so. Icon good evil, that's the world seed. And things I have changed. First off, we have, uh, I run a world generation of 100 years because I don't like the 250 years. Then the next thing that I have changed is the mineral scarcity. Here we go. I'll set that to 10,000. The higher the number, the scarcer the mineral. So this is the same option as this one, basically. 50,000 would be very rare, just so you have a eye on how these numbers are supposed to work and how they're supposed to be uh, understood. So, where were we? Um, yeah, this is, a, it, this is such a uh, hard to overlook thing. So, mineral scarcity. So, there's not much that I have changed, but it is uh, very, very impactful. So, this one here, desired good squares and desired evil squares. I just took the original numbers from a good and evil biome and multiplied them by 10. So what is now the result? This world has a lot of good biomes and a lot of evil biomes. If you would run this only with a heavy bias on evil biomes, you, you tend to have unplayable worlds because the world is so harsh, most of the time the civilizations die out. So the fun thing about this world is the counterbalance between good and evil has made the world gen somewhat stable. So that's all the world gen preparations. Keep in mind that you have to have this screen online when you press create world after you have created the mods and whatnot. There we go. I have already pre-created the world, so here we go. The future planes. And that's what the world looks like. I have already warmed up a narrative because that world is the third world that I rolled up. 
in this uh, for this saga. The first two worlds didn't have too much exciting potential in them, so I had to reroll them. But this one, this one is a keeper. As soon as it is loaded, you know, it's, it's just quite a bulky thing, isn't it? So we get on over to the fortress mode, and then finally the lands of good and evil will unfold. So it's a medium-sized map. The last times I was using a small-sized map, but here I wanted to have a large map so we have as many biomes as possible. I didn't want to go really for a large map. I find a medium map already large enough in terms of uh, keeping a narrative alive. As you might, might or might not see here, it's a wild intermix between evil biomes. Here we have a huge cursed savanna, cursed uh, tropical savanna shrubland stuff and intermixed those huge large globs of good biome here, a huge evil tundra. There's a lot of fun biomes, but what are we going to play in this series, Icon, you might ask me. So here we got the Stockade of Control, a wonderful civilization with a whopping amount of two sites. That was just my cup of tea. So to make matters even more interesting, they're living here exactly on the edge of the world. So. We're going to have in this uh, playthrough series the goal to to make the stockade of control a big uh, old dwarven empire here on this world. The fence of ticking people, they are pretty much on the other side of the world and close by dense forests and uh, these things. So the Dark Age War and Mythos mod adds in lots of new factions. So we have up here Dark Illithid Fortresses, nice, eh? And we got a Wizard Castle, for example. So there's a lot of new things that I cannot foresee how they're going to work. We also have really cool stuff here. Druidic Dwarf Forest Retreat. Check that out. We have Hippie Dwarves. So in this first fortress, I was going to go for a good biome, but not a uh, too heavy good biome, you know. I wanted to have something that's fun to play, but at the same time gives us a good foothold to explore the mod pack without putting too much uh, on my plate, because I'm somewhat afraid of, uh, of the consequences of my doing here. All right, so the filter here is just looking for sand, for iron, and uh, for light aquifer, and the lack of a heavy aquifer, and flux stone. So, uh, oh, I forgot that I wanted to have only the good spirit, but I practically already know where I want to live, so... The thing here is, we have here those uh, druidic dwarves, and my imagination was like, or friends here, they want to have a spearhead, down here, we want to build a large fortress that secures the expansion of our faction in the future. And from there, I hope that I have the comment section full with ideas, whether we go for a evil desert or or those uh, nasty shrublands down there or, or a volcano. There are so many options there. And uh, well, there's a uh, freshwater swamp, haunted tundra, there's large patches of haunt, uh, haunted territory there. So I totally want to play evil and good biomes in this series, but I meant to start out with a good one because I have high hopes that we can at least explore the, the content of the mod pack a little bit before fun emerges out of some pocket and destroys a fortress. Hopefully the Stockade of Control, that's their name, isn't it? Yeah, hopefully the stockade of control will have a uh, glorious future with us. So here, this is the spot that I've looked at. This is without flowing water, so we won't have easy access to river water. That is a little bit of an issue, but it is solvable because we got an aquifer on the map. No biggie. We got iron, we got fluxstone. Really cool. We got clay, we got sand, we got soil. It's getting even better when we're looking down here at the lowest count in the corner of that thing. Look at that. There's even platinum down there. So I really don't know yet how the distribution of the platinum is. If we really have to dig down there in that uh, bottommost corner to get that stuff or uh, how it's going to work. But this is going to be the embark site for this 
first expedition. I want to open up the map one more time so you can uh, check it out for yourself. So give you a little bit of a look around. We can expand into the south to the, through these barren wastes or well get it towards the other freaked wolves i don't know i really don't know where to go with this campaign beyond the first embarkation except for i want to play an evil biome afterwards so i really hope that you folks help me out on that idea feel free to ask away in the comment section i eagerly share details about the world if you want to know something about that or you can just join the discord server the link is in the description box there you can find me and other like-minded gamers and uh, we can have a chat about the future of the series doesn't it sound nice all right so let's get in there this is one spot that i think it, this is as good as it gets the availability of platinum makes it extremely fancy and uh, it's apart from that pretty easy embark i'm not going to expand expect too much uh, problems in the first place but I mean, we got a illithid hostile site northwest of us, so who knows what these guys are going to do. That's the first step in the Dark Ages War in Mythos mod pack, and uh, we're going to embark that thing. And then I'm going to close up that uh, world creation face, and I can only say, welcome to gate page, my friends. So... This is going to be the fortress we're playing for the first season, or let's see, if not, maybe there's something that kills us right there, but no. <laughs> so we're going to explore that whole thing in the course of this upcoming series. It is my first time in a good biome. I never played there before, so I'm really looking forward to that, and I hope so do you. Comment section is open for you. I have already talked enough about that. A thumbs up on that video would be wildly appreciated. And if you want to support the channel, a subscription is all I need to get a serious bump up from you folks. If you hit that bell thing, you stay notified with all the other things I produce during my Dwarf Fortress and other gaming addictions. And I'd be really, really happy to have you. That being said, uh, big thanks to the supporters of this channel. You guys are making these series and all the things possible and if you want to join in the fray patreon paypal and buy me a coffee links are in the description box below be that as it may whether or not you check them out or not you are watching this video until the very end and that means especially a lot to me so thanks for watching yet again i hope your day will be a great one and i can't wait to play this one and see what stories in the land of good and evil will be told see you there